In this project video, I removed the interior of my Jeep and established weight allowances and panel size for armor. We'll discuss challenges we face on this build and modifications that are needed. So let's get started. That's one passenger seat. Hi everyone, and welcome back to the channel. So we're continuing on with the series of armoring a Jeep on a budget. We're going to be discussing the payload capacity and kind of the limiting factors of this build, as well as, you know, how I'm trying to get past it from the weight of the armor and some of the modifications that I'm doing to the car. The main thing right now is gutting it and getting the measurements and the estimated weights based off of previous samples that I have shot, right? And we're also going to cover some of the modifications that are going to be done, as well as the seating capacity when it's all finished and kind of the estimate of what weight will be left over at the end. All right, so if you're new here, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And let's go ahead and dive into all this, gentlemen. All right, so continuing on this, let's go ahead and refresh what kind of armor we're looking at creating. We wanted something that was able to handle the 7.62 by 54R LPS shot out of a Mosin Nagant, right? This has been a pretty uh, difficult round for homemade armor I've seen. It often ends up being quite heavy to stop this type of mild steel core penetrator, which sets it a little bit over like level three, essentially, because it's a bit harder than, or it is definitely harder than the uh, 308, right? And for the glass, we wanted to be able to handle the 7.62 by 39, 123 grain, and the uh, 556, right? So we want basic uh, rifle rated glass and mild steel core stopping power with the body. Now, how are we gonna do this? One of the first things we have to take into consideration when you're trying to armor a vehicle is it's payload capacity. This is how much weight can be inside of the vehicle before systems have issues, right? And you can't just kind of shrug off this number. Really, once you start going well over the payload capacity, not only are you damaging things like the axle and you're losing stopping power, you're probably dragging somewhere. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of things that go wrong because this affects its ability to stop, its acceleration, fuel efficiency, you know, it's turning, it's balanced so it doesn't roll over. All that stuff comes into play when you consider how to balance a load inside of a vehicle, essentially. This number is pretty low. It's set at 1,150 pounds. And there's not a lot of ways to increase payload capacity, sadly. Even if you change out the suspension and stuff, there's no real way to increase that number without doing some major, major modifications to a vehicle, like removing axles and doing a whole lot of stuff. And even then, it's not crash tested and whether or not you can actually do it, even if you could, right? Even if we could, the difficulty comes to the point where it's essentially easier just to buy a vehicle with a higher payload capacity, right? Like it's just going to be easier and cheaper. So what do we do? Well, you know, we set our heart on this 2006 Jeep Liberty. We're gonna try to make this work. So first step is to gut, remove everything we can that we don't need. Obviously we're gonna reduce the amount of occupants in the vehicle down to two or three people rather than five or six, which is what it's kind of with the back soap and everything could fit right we're also going to remove all the trim panels all the insulation everything out to pretty much give us more wiggle room within this and i was able to do that as you can see down here so essentially remove everything from the hitch the seats and use plastic where we can lightweight like lightweight seats to keep a much lower like weight costs because right now that's the biggest issue is keeping this as light as possible so we don't run over 
essentially what our max weight can be. All right, so first we'll start with how I ended up gutting this vehicle and some of the issues I ran in there, and we'll talk more about some of these other things here in a minute. All right, so now it's time to get the curb weight of the Jeep. Essentially, I want to weigh it before we take out any of the main panels and everything. I have everything I've been disassembling just stacked in there, including the seats still. You know, obviously this door has already been gutted. That's how we got some of the measurements before and started testing out panels to fit in there. So we will jack it up. I have boards underneath the tires. Obviously some of the tires are a bit messed up. They're probably gonna be replaced in the near future anyways. We jack them up, put these scales under it. Then we'll have what the weight is currently and then we'll be able to gut everything and see how much weight we can save um, I'm also going to hang on to some of the plastic panels, some of the large ones, because I might end up reusing some of them in the near future. But a lot of the stuff is just going to go ahead and get thrown away. I'm also taking off this uh, spare tire and the whole hitch, because obviously I don't plan on towing anything and it's just worthless weight weighing this vehicle down. So. We're also going to be addressing some of the rust issues, but luckily the frame still looks pretty good. All right, let's uh, jack her up and get going. So I placed boards under the scales to help level and stabilize them. Because the vehicle is on a slight hill and some of the tires are completely flat, getting a cross weight is pretty much impossible at this time. But we can still get the curb weight which was 3,867 pounds, which is pretty much in line with what the number said it would be online. So I started the disassembly by removing all the plastic covers around the front of the vehicle with a trim tool, then removed the seat belts. I decided to save removing and altering the door panels and the dash for a later date. Once the trim and belts were removed, I moved on to the front seats. Now some of these bolts were rusted and pretty buggered up, so I wet the surrounding upholstery and blasted them with a torch to help break them loose. And that really worked quite well. That is a sweet feeling. So you heat something up, oh, and it finally breaks for free. Oof. Right there, boys. Mm. Nothing better. Oh. Hey, quarter. Should send all this trash right here to a Kekistani armor so you can shoot it out of something. Like his cannon. I don't know if you guys saw that, but he's also working on a vehicle. And it's exactly how you would imagine. <laughs> I'll provide a link in the description. You guys want to see my dude Kex uh, <laughs> car? <laughs> Put a cannon on top of it. That's uh, pretty cool, actually. I love the kid. He does some terrifying stuff. Almost there. Come on. But he is for sure fun to watch. Come on. I don't have to use my finger, but. It's Oh yeah, nope, she's still singing hot, so, owie. So anyways, all right, now we can finally take this chair out. Cool. So after the front seats were taken out, I removed the center console, leaving behind just the handles. Then it was onto the rear sofa seats and trim. Luckily, most of these nuts didn't really put up a fight like the ones in the front. Once the sofa was out, it was onto the rear plastic pieces and the flooring. Once all those were out, it was onto the roofing insulation panel. Now this process took me a few days of on and off working at it because of the weather. As such, I ended up with a bunch of footage that I just didn't find all that interesting. So I'm just kind of skimming over a lot here. It was essentially just removing nuts, bolts, 
and prying at plastic pieces. If anyone wants more detailed steps, I could provide that information for them. After the inside was finished, I moved on to the spare tire and its mount, and also the hitch. Now because the hitch was next to the gas tank, I had to be a little bit more creative with busting those bolts loose, because I couldn't use open flame. Alright, so now that it's back on the scales, it shows that we have gotten essentially 399 pounds taken out with all this crap. That's awesome. So essentially 400 pounds has been reduced. We still of course have the dash and all that stuff to take out. Some more plastic panels on the back and these doors as well as the metal like we did with this one. Just saving back the uh, locking mechanisms and hinges for it. But that's, uh, that's pretty awesome guys. Yes, that will work. That will work. Alright, so now that we've gotten pretty much all the upholstery and seats and everything out and pretty well gutted, you can see we've already gained right around 400 pounds that we get to add on to our, you know, max payload capacity because we took it out of the vehicle. So essentially from this point on, whatever we put in is going to take away from this. Now I'm definitely going to modify and take a lot of the stuff out of the dash, probably all the stereo system and the air conditioning and everything. So that will give us some more weight to work with down the line. But right now we're just going to base it off of this currently. Okay. Cause I know there's you know some more modification there and more stuff we can take out. So, how are we going to approach this moving forward knowing, you know, that we have about 15, you know, 1500 pounds? Well, there are a few things to do. As stated before, we're going to reduce the amount of occupants in it. So it was originally rated for like five people. We're dropping it down to at least two to three. We're going to consider the max payload allowance for people and their equipment to being around 400 to 450 pounds, which is essentially what we just gave the vehicle. So we get to just play with this number now for armor and whatever else we add on to the vehicle essentially. I'm mostly aiming for two people at the moment because, you know, depending on, you know, I weigh more than 150 pounds and I'm not that big of a guy. So I'm going to kind of gravitate more towards the 400, essentially what we just gave it and just do two seats, but we might do a third one. For the seats, I've already been looking into lighter alternatives like racing seats and bucket seats. And that's what I'm going to go with. I've already calculated by weighing uh, one of the seats, removing the seat base and just like the equipment that will be needed to be put back in and comparing it to the online weight of these types of seats, right? They're made out of polyethylene. Uh, they're usually used in racing cars to save on weight. And the difference in the weight per seat is about 38 pounds with the seat base. For a total of just two of those, a 76 pound weight reduction. That's fantastic. So that's one thing that I've definitely already ordered. Let's get those, right? Removed all that internal things. I'm saving back some of the plastic trim, even depending on how we mold and fabricate this armor moving forward, the panels and everything. Some of those plastic panels will be, you know, useful for both figuring out the shapes as well as probably going to go back in. So I'm going to save some of that stuff, but all the flooring and roofing and stuff, that's got to go. I'm going to cut a hole in the ceiling to make a roof hatch as well. That's why I thought maybe a third seat right in the middle, anchored with to where the studs were for the uh, sofa. That might be a cool idea. So that'd be like the third seat, kind of the gunner seat. Um, I want to also install yeah, so the gas tank, I'm probably going to move into the trunk space. That's something I should mention. There's some danger to that, obviously, because if you have a fuel leak, then you just pretty much made a coffin because having it inside of the vehicle to potentially leak everywhere, you know. So depending on how we do that, I kind of like how derby cars have it, crash, you know, derby cars, their style of how they have their fuel 
and that is on the inside of the vehicle generally, so it doesn't leak out everywhere. We'll cover that more a little bit later once we actually get to the fuel, but that's something that I am considering. Another thing I like is airbag spring helpers. Now this Jeep can have these. I've already been looking up a few different models. This idea was actually originally turned on to me by one of my co-workers. He'd done it to his RAV and uh, it really helps. It doesn't increase payload capacity, okay? But what it will essentially do is once we get up close to this max payload capacity, everything is going to sink down. So, you know, we're talking about possibly altering or buying aftermarket, you know, suspension stuff. Well, these are really cool because they're generally a fairly cheap option. They worked off of compressed air and it's basically an airbag that fits inside of the, the spring on back and the front if your vehicle can take them and it will provide a lot of lift. And some of them, like the ones I was looking at, are rated for over a thousand pounds in some cases and you can control the air pressure on it. The modification he did, the gentleman that I'm referring to, actually could just walk up and plug in his air compressor and he had dial or gauges so he could just alter how much pressure was in each of them, helping balance the system as well. And that'll help even when you have this maximum load that we're essentially going to do. It'll help balance the vehicle out and you know still give us the stopping power, keep you know the, the back end higher and everything so we're not you know dragging ass essentially so that's some of the modifications I really like those air those airbag uh, suspension systems so that's really cool and of course the the seats we already covered that anyways let's talk about some of the other stuff over on this board well it doesn't really work too well for it but hey so after I took out the panels I could easily figure out the square foot that we need to armor, right? And that's what I did here. I broke it into a few different things. The four doors, established the square foot, the front pillars, right? The back door, the large back door, a large rear panels on the side, rear pillar, other rear pillar, those are the parts that go up to the roof, right? We want to armor all that. And so I calculated this and gave it a I overestimated for them because depending on the direction we go it's better that we calculate over than under obviously so I rounded up for essentially all this stuff and it came out to 51 feet squared pretty large area and then of course I also did all the windows calculated that you know and this one was a little bit more tricky because you know a lot of the windows weren't perfectly square they're like awkwardly shaped so I just rounded them to essentially a perfect square so I know that this is an overestimate of those I know it and that's fine because I'd rather be over than under and as we go forward the uh, full the estimate will turn into like the true factual as we continue to me measure and remove a few other panels right so essentially that was 34.13 feet squared now that we have these and we have our armor ratings that we want to do we start plugging in the numbers of how much weight i've managed to accomplish on armor previously like a 10 pound per square foot which if you watch my uh the last video on this topic of the armor for the jeep i got uh two plates that were really close to this some of them were over this limit right so we needed no more than 10 pounds per square foot based off that and if both the panels and the glass the bulletproof glass were 10 pounds it would be 851.3 you know 851 pounds for just the armor and that's just the cab now you can see why we have an issue with our gross vehicle weight allowance right our max payload this is a big issue so what do we do well, first off, I don't actually know how much bulletproof glass weighs. I've made the stuff in the past. If you followed this channel, you've probably seen I have about two to three videos on the topic. But I never really sat down and weighed the panels before I shot them. I was just comparing thicknesses and clarity. I didn't really focus on the weight. So this is a big question. I don't know how heavy 
a square foot of rifle ray bulletproof glasses. Truthfully, I haven't really made bulletproof glass that was able to handle these threats yet. I've gotten it all the way up to the 44 Magnum. I even got a jacketed hollow point, but I haven't gotten a full metal jacket on either of these two. So that's one of the things we're going to do very soon. I just bought a whole bunch of polycarbonate, different types of glass, different adhesives, different films, and more grades and thicknesses of acrylic. And we're going to do a major guide on this and seeing what's the lightest rifle rated bulletproof glass we can create that's able to handle these threats. So that's a big, big update that's coming out. And hopefully it'll be no more, you know, the lightest, the lightest one is going to win out of those bunch. Okay. I'm overestimating because it could be below 10 pounds per square foot. I don't know. Glass tends to be on the heavier side, so we're probably going to lean more into the utilization of, you know, obviously laminated glass, but probably polycarbonate and acrylic too, just to lighten the load on that. As far as this is concerned, you know, there's certain areas that we're going to have to use steel, and a 3 eighths of an inch square foot of AR 500 to 550 steel weighs about 13 pounds, like 13 and a half pounds. So it's over this. So we can't just say, because we know that that thickness will stop the LPS. Okay. Thinner than that, it, I'm not entirely sure. I haven't done really that much experimentation with steel. So, but there are certain areas we're going to have to add steel, like the grill and everything. But that's the, one of the big problems with this is if we went with that, we would make it if we didn't do any anything on the engine, right? We would we would hit with now this increase of payload capacity. We would just doing the cab, just with the armor I've made in the past. We would hit it, but then the engine would be exposed, and if it gets shot up, right? So it's kind of diverging on what exactly we want to do. My idea currently is make better armor. <laughs> no, we might have to break out of the mold and try some other experiments. I have some that might be able to breach under 10 pounds. And there's an individual by the name of 3R Ballistics. He's done some really cool experiments lately. He's been on my Discord. We've been sharing ideas with each other. I really like this man. Um, but he's done some really cool experiments with concrete. I've always considered that to be far too heavy, but he's shown that he could make some fairly light concrete. And with porcelain and concrete, he's been able to reach some of the, or close to, the armor rating that I want at under 10 pounds. Like nine and some change. Still under 10 pounds. So that might be one of the directions too. So stay tuned if that ends up happening, if we do like a collaboration to test some of those cements and concretes out because I don't really know that type of material. So I've never really experimented with it. But now that I have two individuals, him in particular and another gentleman on my Discord that have, I might actually go the direction of utilizing it for this. So anyways, I know that was a lot to cover real quickly, but we know that we're going to change out the seats with a lighter alternative to it, add air suspension or airbags. Um, still have to plug in these numbers and try desperately to get below this because I would like the whole vehicle armored, not just the cab. I also want to mention that I would like to remove these corner windows that are in the back corner, right? They don't really serve a purpose if no one's sitting farther back, and I'm thinking about just adding steel over it, so taking out that, and that would be less for the windows. I guess it depends on if the windows end up being lighter <laughs> than some of the other armor. Okay, so, alright boys, continuing on this process, I know this is a very long, and I know a lot of you have wanted this to continue for some time. It's getting done, I promise you. I am getting momentum forward. I've been uploading pretty much every week now. If you don't see a video, check the community tab. I've also done a short and I'm going to upload shorts regularly when 
projects take a much longer period of time to get a new update video for them. I have some other things coming up, mainly focused on this stuff currently though. I might drop a, one or two other videos on sample plates and a kiln that I've been working on, but that's just because I have a bunch of footage on it. Moving forward, I want to make as much ground on this as possible. Thank you guys so much for being patient. I will see you very soon. Huge thank you to my Patreon supporters. You don't know how much it means to me that that little bit of uh, money has really helped. It literally paid for the Bulletproof class. That was thanks to you guys. So, all right, I want to do something special for you in the near future as well. But yeah, see you in the video, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.